Oh, no, no, no. 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 What's up, Wikimaniacs? My name is Josh Shell, back as your Am I the Asshole host. Shout out to Rebecca again for last Friday's amazing episode. I've had nothing but good response so far, so uh, definitely going to have another Turtles Can Fly episode sometime in the future. Facts. With me are the usual duo, John Consignato and Sean Salvino. What is up, boys? Hello. Speaking of Turtles Can Fly... I did like a little sneak peek on Instagram, like just a story. Okay. The amount of freaking comments and be like, oh my God, it's finally happening. It was insane. Hey. I, was in a meet- I was in a meeting today and my my phone just kept going. It was just messages and messages of people getting excited. So hope you all enjoyed that episode. We had so much fun with Rebecca. It was awesome. And hopefully we didn't scare her away. <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. Sean talked about uh, people sending him poop pictures. So I hope that didn't scare her away. <laughs> And I hope people, I hope people do send. No. Uh, This is another beacon. (laughs) No. Uh, Instagram is a great place. Uh, It's not. Oh, dear. Oh, Oh, dear. And I do have a follow up for you boys. I remember there was a, there was a comment or a little some, some last episode, something having to do with ASMR. Okay. I don't know if you remembered. Is this from the Discord? No, it's about ASMR porn. <laughs> and I oh. said, I'll come back. I'll come back to you if it's confirmed. There is a genre. <laughs> there is a genre? <laughs> yes. Like, Wait, but is, oh, it, is it just oh. only audio? No. Well, it's... Or it's just let, a mic close up to private parts. Let me, let me just, just say it's enhanced sound. <laughs> I have more questions, but I don't... I worry we're early enough in the episode that YouTube will demonetize us if I ask too many more questions. So ask again later. We'll let it slide for now. But <laughs> yeah. uh, that does explain why you're sweating so much right now. Oh, yeah, that's probably what it is. But Josh knows the real reason why I'm sweating so goddamn much right now. <laughs> yeah, John had a hot chicken sandwich because he didn't learn his lesson from I did the it. Hot Ones episode. It was a ghost chili hot chicken and my stomach is crazy right now. Gonna shit naked pretty soon. <laughs> Please wait until the end of the episode because again, the I might just be doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! All right, we're gonna move on to the topics for today. So, uh, on today's episode, we have a <laughs> knock knock joke that ruins a New Year's Eve party. A listener ends their relationship over jewelry. Another listener gets a coworker to quit. We have a lot of listeners submitted today. Oh, listeners submitted. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and a father uses a New Year's Eve party to teach his daughter a lesson. I also have another story at the end if we have time, but uh, that'll be, I'll leave that as a tease if we have enough time before the patron exclusive. So give, give it to the wicked maniacs. We'll see. We'll see. It's, it's getting late. You know, uh, we started late recording today, so true, <laughs> we'll, true, we'll true. see. Uh, but for our patron exclusive stories, we have a daughter who gets a hotel room to herself and a wife shows up to her husband's doctor doctor's appointment. I think is what mm. I meant to say. I put doctor's party and I now realize that's the that's not party. What, what kind of party? <laughs> it's an appointment. I don't, I'm tired. Ah. I put the wrong word. Sorry. So if you want to hear those last two stories and get ad free episodes, head on over to patreon.com slash cultivate podcast network. Sign up today. Shout out to everyone watching YouTube live and TikTok live. Uh, wow. They've been, y'all been so good. They've been popping the last few weeks, Crazy. weeks here. Uh, the time so change has really helped out the Wikimaniac. So thank you to all of you who suggested that. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, apologies if you live on the other side of the world and it is midnight for you, but can't appease everyone. I apologize. Uh, to be fair, it was midnight <laughs> for us when we were talking to y'all. So we were half asleep. We're very tired time. before the time change. Yeah. So Sean tried uh, to show up one time and he just did it in the comments and he's okay, like, nobody's so, here. <laughs> I was in the regular comments. I didn't know that there were separate <laughs> comments for a live. So I was like, hi, friends. And then it was like 15 minutes in and no one responded. I was like, damn, shit. And then I, I went to sleep. And then John was like, oh, comments were popping. I was like, really? Were they? <laughs> Did you just say shit about Toyota Thon or something like that? Or oh, I something. think I said ha- happy Honda days. Honda was days. Christmas. It was about oh. a car. Yeah. Yeah. Happy Honda days, friends. Wow. And then nobody one. responded. And I was like, wow, I guess the joke was that bad that <laughs> no one wanted to even acknowledge me being here for the first time. Fuck. 
He tried though. So learn from Sean's mistake that there is a live chat and a comment yes. section. There's two different things. So, uh, so hopefully everyone has found it. Who's watching live right now. Uh, <laughs> but with that, is there anything else you guys would like to talk about before we hop into the episode? Oh, no, I'm starting okay. late. I'm, I'm saying we get into it so we can get to All that right. uh, teaser. That mm-hmm. teaser. Yeah, you exactly. He's strip teasing for us later. I think nope, that's what nope, it is. Nope. Again, the monetization, we need the income. <laughs> wait until we're 20 minutes in, John. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry. That's Wait until the Patreon exclusive. <laughs> Prematurely. <laughs> All right. Stop. So, so. This, what? Just... <laughs> <laughs> First story. Am I the asshole for telling my parents that they ruined a New Year's Eve celebration after they kicked my husband out over a joke? Depends how bad the joke the was. Joke there's, is, some, yeah. there's some bad jokes. That's true. Especially Come. if it's like racist, sexist, or like just generally offensive. I would probably be like, bro, you killed the vibes. You got yep. to go. You got to <laughs> fucking go. Get the F out. Yeah, uh, agreed. Yeah, this one comes listener submitted by dumpthink4082 on our subreddit. It was cross posted there. So, oh wait, did you guys give, you guys said maybe that was your prediction, Sean? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go with what Sean said. The joke must have been so bad to the point that that had to happen. Okay, okay. Just yeah. wanted to make I sure. Am, I am curious to know of like how offensive a fucking knock knock joke can be. <laughs> True. Those are generally like, pretty innocent. Like a child joke. Also, yeah. if you're adults making that joke, then you're. Do better. Yeah, do better. Make it wholesome. Um, all right, let's hop into it and see what this joke was. So, I've been married to my second husband, Mike, for four years now. He's a jokester and loves to crack jokes all the time. He especially likes to joke with my brother, Ethan, and his wife. Ethan used to be okay with it until he started complaining about Mike taking it too far with his jokes. Also, these are not their real names, just for, you know, oh, TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> Don't cancel us. Uh, some context about Ethan. He and his wife couldn't have kids, so they adopted a boy, Joey, oh, oh, two yep, years no. ago. He made a, he made an inappropriate joke already. I can yep. tell. <laughs> okay, yeah, it wasn't yeah. a good joke. <laughs> uh, Mike has been making silly, lighthearted jokes involving Joey's biological parents as a way to mess with Ethan and his wife. I already talked to Mike, and I tell you that he 100% means no harm, and that he's just trying to get them to react. That's I the worst kind of humor. Is yeah. The humor that you know nobody is laughing. But you're just like, yeah, I want to see them fucking get mad. At the mad expense or... of a child. Like, yeah. An innocent kid. So fast forward to New Year's Eve. My parents hosted a big celebratory dinner and Ethan and his wife came. While we were eating, Mike decided to tell a knock-knock joke to Ethan. He said, knock-knock. Who's there? Who's there? There we go. <laughs> and Mike replied, Joey's biological parents. And then proceeded to burst out laughing. Silence, just like the one you guys are doing, took over and Ethan's facial expression changed. His wife called Mike an idiot, to which Mike replied with, hey, relax, it was just a joke. Uh. An argument ensued and dinner was paused. My parents suddenly told Mike to leave, which I thought was too harsh. I tried to speak with them and get them to calm down, but my mom insisted that Mike leave. We left and Mike was complaining the whole time about how they overreacted. I called mom later and she told me that Mike was out of line with his hurtful joke about this touchy topic and told me I was wrong for defending him and saying he was just joking. She said he ruined New Year's Eve for the family, but I told her it was her and dad who ruined New Year's Eve celebration for escalating the situation and kicking him out. I told her he could talk to them, but again, they were the ones who ruined the New Year's Eve celebration. She called me delusional for the statement and hung up. We haven't talked to them for days. I tried contacting Ethan, but no response. Am I the asshole? Is this do I need, listener do I need to submitted? Ask that? <laughs> Is it listener submitted? No. Oh, I'm about to say. <laughs> I was like, this could be your first asshole one? No. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm surprised Ethan didn't knock knock the fuck him out. Because <laughs> oh, that's a very sensitive topic to bring up. Yeah, absolutely. Terrible pun, by the way, John. Uh, but yeah. we're gonna move past. <laughs> uh yeah, Sean, I think you nailed it. Uh again. This is your I don't know why we're always surprised. It's your calling uh, card. I mean, I'm either wildly off base or wildly <laughs> accurate. It's it's all or nothing with the predictions. That's true. Yeah, I think we've said most of it, but it is terrible to make a joke about a child, especially like a sensitive topic where they can't have a child and to just keep bringing that up and making that joke, especially when they've expressed yeah. uh, it makes them uncomfortable. That's my that thing. That is no longer is, a joke. That's that's my main thing, too, is like after Ethan has already communicated like, hey, man, like that really makes me uncomfortable. I'd rather you not do that. And for you to mm. keep doing that 
And then also make a big scene when you do it, not just like small remarks here and there, like between the two yeah. of you, but like in front of the family, try to embarrass and clown him. Of course, no one wants you there, dude. Of course, no one wants yeah. you there. First off, you're married into that family. You're not even like blood with that it's family. So of course they're going to take yeah. Ethan's side. It's like, what's your end game? You think everyone's going to be like, laugh at your joke that everybody has been saying they don't like? There's a lot of people like this that think they're so fucking funny and they're, they're just not, they're just <laughs> rude and offensive. And they think that that is what people find is funny. Uh, and it's yeah. just, they can't read a fucking room. It's incredible. It's incredible to me when people can't read a room and they just fucking keep gnawing and keep trying to joke. Yeah. If you ever have to say the words relax, it's just a joke. You're in the wrong immediately. Mm -hmm. I think uh, there's, there's almost no scenario where you're not immediately the bad guy in that situation because People can react however they feel. And if, especially like if you're making a joke and it crosses the line and they get offended, that's on you. That's not on them. They're, yep. they're reacting to the shitty thing you said. So, uh, 100% you're the asshole. Yeah. It's like one of those situations where it's a classic shock jock type of joke. And to me, the doubling down of the, the, was it the wife that said he was just joking? Yeah. It was. Yeah, and to double down and to protect someone like that. Yes, granted, you think that he's a jokester and he does this all the time, but sometimes you got to notice someone's behavior and correct it. You know, yeah. it, it has been brought up so many times that it's a sensitive subject. And for you to not defend Ethan and say, okay, this may be out of line, that's on you for doubling down and protecting that. Because now he's going to make that same offensive joke to another party and he's mm -hmm. going to think it's okay because you're going to protect him and you're going to defend him on that matter. So you both are assholes. Yeah. If you're maybe if you're like a stand up comedian and you say an offensive joke, it's like, OK, like people are there to see you. But if you're just a normal fucking person saying a joke and making everybody uncomfortable, yeah. I don't I don't get it. Like at least the, the stand up comedian is like, all right, I was paid to get here. Some jokes hit some jokes don't. But like as yeah. a regular person, if someone like goes up to you and it's like, hey, stop. And then you keep going. Oh, it's the worst. I feel like I've <laughs> I've, I've experienced this in life. Not where I've gotten offended for a joke, but just when like somebody is trying to be funny and very clearly everybody in the room is like sick of it or like just not mm -hmm. vibing. And I'm just it's like very clearly ruining the mood. And yes, you're just like, yo, chill. Worst. I'm just like, <laughs> dude, how can you not tell no one is liking this? Like, yeah, just shut up and like let the <laughs> let the vibes pick back up with you being quiet for a little bit. I don't know. Hey, man. Let's turn the music up so we can't hear it anymore. <laughs> oh, change the topic, please. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think this is I'm discovering right now in this moment that that is a pet peeve of mine. I didn't really <laughs> it think definitely about makes it now. Me cringe. Yeah, it, it brought it, me to it, like flashback to multiple moments in my life <laughs> where I've just been like, dude, shut the fuck up, bro. Yeah. Please. Oh. <laughs> And those are the type of people that will not shut the fuck up. So I'm saying True. super oh, unfortunate. The worst. Uh, all right. So I think we're all consensus uh, asshole and double asshole for those two. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to the parents for standing up to that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good for them for not putting up with it. All right. Moving on to our second story. This one is listener submitted. Um, uh -huh. So there's a chance. There's, there's a, a chance. chance. There's, there's a, a chance, chance of an asshole, asshole listener. Uh, am I the asshole for breaking my relationship over jewelry? And this one comes from user advice needed 89, which was posted on our subreddit. Whoa. Reddit on wiki. So, ah, gotta love listener submissions. Yes. Wow. We love listener submissions. <laughs> uh, so, what do you, <laughs> so what do you think? Am I the asshole for breaking my relationship over jewelry? To be honest, I can't tell from the little context we have. And just as a gambling man myself, uh, listeners oh, have... Oh, you're a gambling man. Have, uh, I dabble. I dabble. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but Nancy's better at it. Nancy's definitely better at it, yeah. <laughs> Destroyed me in fantasy football. But uh, I, I will say listeners are hitting at like a 100% rate of not being an asshole. So with the little context True. I have, I'll, I'll go with the odds. I like to think that our listeners are, you know, self-aware enough that <laughs> they're like, most situations you're not going to be the asshole, but... Uh, that's a that's a good assumption. God damn it! God fucking damn it! <laughs> God, not here anymore. anymore. <laughs> so. uh, what about you, John? Well, I'm a. I think the track record is gonna gonna stay. But, gonna hold up. Know, they're gonna hold up. Yeah. What are we this, like? This jewelry must have some really important value, whether if it's like a family heirloom or not. So 
Yeah, because if be. you lose a ring, either a family heirloom or something very expensive, if you lose that, mm-hmm. I could I could understand being like, dude, I can't trust you. Like, you know, yeah, I, I entrusted Even you with this piece of jewelry. I'd be like, I don't yeah. know if I could. You knew how important this was to me. Even if it wasn't uh, a family heirloom, jewelry as it is is expensive as shit. So yeah. I get mad about that. Yeah. Some people work super hard and tirelessly just to afford engagement rings or like a gift or something. So it has to be something sentimental in my eyes. True. Yeah, that's a very good point. All right. My boyfriend, 27 male, and I, 25 female, have been together for a little over a month. I have to go out of state for work sometimes. This last weekend, I spent so much time with him at his place before leaving, and he took me to the airport the next day. After I came back from my work trip, my boyfriend picked me up, and I went to his place. This morning, I looked down to the side of the bed, and there was an earring lying on the floor. Ooh. Yikes. I think I didn't notice it the night before because I got there super late, and it was dark. So I just went to sleep. After finding the earring, I turned around and asked him, whose is this? And he responded, you know, you're not the only girl that I brought here, right? (gasps) And he proceeded to get mad for me not trusting him. I think he means like before they dated, but. Oh, okay. Still not a great response. (laughs) You could have Um, used a better choice of words. Yeah. Yeah. Explained it. Fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, I put on my clothes and told him I wanted to go home. He drove me home and I didn't want to talk to him till I gathered my thoughts, but he gave me his phone and asked me to go through it to see that he didn't do anything. And he said that me finding the earring was not proof enough. Proof enough for what? Nothing has happened. That he's yet. cheating. <laughs> but it, it could be the same situation like that. The one with the work wife. He's like, hey, go um, through my phone and you'll see no messages. Next thing Snapchat. you know, it's Snapchat. It's, that's yeah. where it is. So maybe it's a, it's one of those things where it's like, here, I am trustworthy. I'm laying it all on the line. But, but I've deleted something. everything. <laughs> there's still some trifling shit behind it. Maybe Pizza Hut was texting you at like three in the morning and it's just save this Pizza Hut. I don't fucking know. <laughs> hey, but also, even if he didn't cheat and that's from like a girl from before they were dating, you haven't cleaned your room in over a month. True. Or Gross. You don't have the ability to communicate that. and Instead, you go on a defensive and say shit like yeah. that. Yeah. So that's, that's already where... a red flag for me. Yeah, that's true. You could have been like, oh, yeah. You know me, I'm dirty as fuck. That was uh, from before. <laughs> you see, you I've, me, I've I never used, cheated. I used to fuck I, around. I don't know how to fuck it. <laughs> I used I'm to fuck around a lot. Guy. You know the vibes. You were fucking uh, before me too, right? Hey. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sure. I, can do that. Uh, I like fuck boy Sean. He's awkward and could never be a real fuck boy. No. Dude, never. fuck boy Sean will definitely fuck, dude. <laughs> Just Your charisma, bro? GG's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once I got home and I had a few hours to think, I decided to message him and tell him that I would rather not be with someone if I can't trust him slash her. I told him I didn't want to waste his or my time and I would rather not be with him since I feel like now I will always wonder if he was telling the truth or if he is slash was cheating. He called me back and started complaining that I didn't hear him out and he didn't think I loved him because I should have put more effort on finding out who she, uh, she the earring owner, was, what she drove, what her name was, etc. What a weird... After one month, you're going to be Yeah, that's what I'm that saying. Shit. After yeah. after a month, it's like, if you're not feeling the vibes, you're not feeling, that's like the perfect time to get out. You know what I mean? It's that's just true. a month. A little like trial a 30 run. day money back guarantee, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Is that how that works? I don't fucking know. I don't date either. It's like a warranty. <laughs> you can tell John and I haven't dated in a decade. Yeah, we didn't date a lot. <laughs> you have no was, experience with that. I was like, God oh, damn, I could have used this like five years ago. <laughs> I want my money back, please, for all the dates that I took you <laughs> Money, please. (laughs) He also said it was my loss because he was part of the 1% that didn't cheat. Weird stat. Oh, nice nice guy vibes. Yeah. 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 After being cheated on in a previous relationship, I felt like I needed to go through their phone or that I wanted to question their friendship with others. But I came to the conclusion I didn't want to be that person. And I felt like if I needed to do that, then it's best to just cut the relationship. Am I rushing this decision? And am I the asshole? Nah. You trusted your judgment. Plus, yeah, like you guys said, it's one month. It's one if month. If you have, if you see a red flag and you're like, this is something I couldn't get over going forward, then that's 100% your prerogative. You're not locked into mm. a relationship. I mean, <laughs> if it yeah. was longer and you were worried about something like that, then. And if it was longer and then, then there wasn't earrings in there, then that motherfucker is definitely cheating. Because there's sure. no way in hell you haven't noticed that. Yeah. One month. Yeah, I'm not gonna say. Loss. I'm not gonna say you lost a lot because you probably on just like the getting to know you phase. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. It, it's to me like I got the bad the bad vibes for that. That instead of him communicating a certain way, 
he immediately went for like the defense and thing and and you know and say some out of pocket shit like that. I mean, it wasn't that yeah. out of pocket, but the explanation kind of sus. But yeah, the weird, but you, the weird nice guy comment was. Yeah, that's even more yeah. weird. That's the nail in the coffin. Like, oh, okay, yeah. I made the right decision here. I'm part of the one percent that doesn't cheat. What does that mean? It's, it's definitely the fact that way you more had, than one percent. <laughs> the fact that you had to say that you definitely cheated. Yeah, God. yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. I mean, even if he hasn't cheated, the fact that he said that he, you know, he, I don't know. It's just big, nice time, nice guy vibes. Even if he doesn't yeah, cheat, you know, it's still like it's like a pick me dude. Yeah, <laughs> I'm and, not like and, those others. <laughs> all those factors aside, even if they weren't a nice guy, or maybe if they didn't cheat, he's just a dirty motherfucker who doesn't clean his room yeah. for over a month. So I don't yeah. think you want to be with someone who doesn't clean their room like that. Exactly. Yeah, it's either yeah, it's either someone who cheated on you or someone who hasn't. And if he hasn't picked up the earring that's been on there for a month, do you think he's changed the sheets that y'all are also sleeping <laughs> on? It's disgusting. To yeah, think about. it's gross to think about. I think you made the right decision, listener. Exactly. So. There is an update. Oh. And it gets worse. Oh. Update. He said the earring was from someone he slept with before we were even talking. We had been exclusive for two and a half months. The earring was in front of the nightstand, about six inches so in front of it. Two and a half months he hasn't washed the sheets or cleaned yep. it. <laughs> Early motherfucker. Mm. Wait, wait. I, I think you're wrong with that assumption. So the earring was in front of the nightstand, about six inches in front of it, and about eight inches away from the bed. I have been at his place several times before, and I usually drop my bag or clothes on the same spot, and I've never seen it before. So he cheated. Oh, she comes. He's a cheated motherfucker. Yeah, Yeah, that's what she's implying. Update number two, which is the worst of it all. He called me and told me he had cameras in his place and that we could watch them to prove he did nothing. (gasps) Oh, no, 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 no. no. Come to find he had cameras in the kitchen slash living room area. No wonder he wanted to have sex there. Now I'm afraid he saved the video. Oh no, that is oh my god. That is this is, like can or, you can you like sue for like premeditated revenge porn? Is that I don't know the revenge porn law. Definitely but, I think in the United States now, if you, even if you own it, you can yeah, he, sue them or something like you can charge them basically. Yeah, it seems wrong to have like people who keep their exes nudes and shit. I'm just like that's so fuck. fucking that's weird. Bad, right? Like yeah. that's evil. Yeah. Like you shouldn't have that if you're not with them anymore. Yeah, because um, because the consent is gone now, right? Like, yeah, oh, they said the it context, to you when you were when you had the consent and the context. Like you were just about to say, yeah, and, and now it's like that's gone. They no longer want to be with you, or or vice versa, whatever it is. So you should no longer have access to that. But yeah. I mean, dude, that's freaking foul. It's weird. Yeah, this is like. Have you all ever watched It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Yes. You know how all of them are, you know, they're supposed to be like just the worst humans imaginable. Just like beyond imagination. These are the worst people in existence. Yeah. This is like something that those characters do. Like actually one of them does this. (laughs) So it's like the implication, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's Dennis. This is. is, Yeah. I was just saying you missed that one. I missed that. Fuck. (laughs) Thank God. (laughs) <laughs> this is some Dennis activity. And if you find yourself mimicking any of these characters, I think you really need to take a step back and look at yourself and be yeah, like, really re- am I re-evaluate. a fucking monster? <laughs> am I yeah. crazy? Because all of those characters yes. should not be any, they're purposefully written to not be admired and like modeled after. Yeah. So w- wild. So, so insane you- to have cameras with no <laughs> consent and not tell them. <laughs> Two Dude. and a half months. And, and Do you know so, how much so, I walk around my house naked and shit. Like, can you just imagine oh if? Oh. Well, <laughs> well, in now like I boxers. Am now, it. now I'm imagining it, baby. In boxers and shit. Uh, but like, you know what we'll I mean? Take like, it off next time. Yeah, you got any cameras around? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Absolutely not. Am I, am I gonna have to dox you, bro? <laughs> <laughs> my God. Yeah. So even if he wasn't cheating, which it seems like it's a slim chance that he wasn't, this is just a criminal probably oh i think absolutely. Yeah, i think so for um sure. yeah i don't so know the law like it, around it but it feels like it definitely should be illegal if it's not yeah no more returns commented on the post on our subreddit and they said oh my god you 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 also i'm pretty sure this is some sort of crime to film someone in a private place without their knowledge slash consent yes check right? the privacy laws for your area and go to the police i second that and definitely you should do that for sure if if you have concerns that that he's actually filmed you, which 
sounds like he has. If you don't have concerns, you definitely should have concerns because he already said yeah. that he did. So I wonder if you can even file, uh, like you said earlier, Sean, like if it's a premeditated thing, I wonder if you can go and get a police report for that. So that way, if there's any suspicious activity online, like cyber crimes can fic- uh, pick it up. Mm. Maybe, Potentially. Yeah. I wonder. Uh, yeah, you, we need you Rebecca can't arrest on here. for like premeditated <laughs> crimes because that's not a thing. Yeah, that's but, not a thing. But I but think that's it like might... that's like the Winter Soldier trying to kill people before they're actually a threat. Yeah, yeah. that leaves a, a dangerous precedent. But like, yeah, there should be some sort of I don't know, like uh, I don't know. That seems evil. Well, it seems if very he filmed evil. you without your consent, then that's uh, that is illegal, right? Yeah, in, so, in some places, hopefully all places. I so I don't no idea, but <laughs> so my check my, your my my question is, and it's it's still as creepy to me. Is it actual like cameras, like like a video cam, or is it like a surveillance type of shit where they it's can probably say surveillance? It's I think like, it oh, is. it's for home yeah. uh, privacy. It's probably security, but also the fact that he never told disclosed the women that, that go there mm-hmm. uh, makes it creepy. He has ulterior motives if he's not being like, oh, full disclosure. I have security cam, so like just so you know, uh, yeah. Yeah, don't be get but don't damn, get too comfortable, be- I guess. <laughs> but also, it is creepy because he was like, "Let's have sex in these specific places that I yeah, know my yeah, camera's that, that to part, do that." But I think yeah. he's gonna. The sad part is, even if they were reported, and if that's like a, a legit a surveillance camera, the sad thing is, most homes are equipped with that shit now, and I think he's gonna be able to get away with it. But, well, which is a sad part. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say he's a man; he probably will get away. With it. <laughs> but, yeah, wait, uh, most people have cameras inside. Yeah, I have I have all over my living room. God damn. Oh. Why? I don't I I, Why? Feel, I feel like I would feel so Because dystopian. if people want to fuck around and find out and enter my home, one, they I'm gonna see them. <laughs> Two, I'm gonna blast the shit out of them if they enter a specific room. Oh god. A real uh, Texan. I'll throw I'm a, a snowball at them or something, I guess, that, here if that happens. But <laughs> yeah. I have cameras outside. I feel like yeah, inside I that. Just me personally, I'm like, oh man, it's too like nineteen eighty four for me yeah. personally. But yeah, I, I seen, get because I, I have friends that do have indoor cameras. Now that I think about it, see that's I, the part that I'm that I'm concerned about is they can just justify that as a, as a security for my home. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I don't know. I'd I'd look up your laws, see if you if there's anything you can do. Um, if you're not uh, able to do anything, that's super unfortunate. But you're a 120 million percent not the asshole here. Uh, oh yeah, for sure. We have smart Wikimaniacs who are very much professionals. If we have any yes. lawyer Wikimaniacs that and practices and that can, oh, I wouldn't. Turtles can fly as a lawyer. Um, True. If if there's anyone that can provide us more kind of legal jurisdiction of how these things go when it comes to cyber crimes, please give us give us a comment or something. I feel like this is going to be like local law, though. True. True. Yeah. And they probably don't want to dox themselves. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. Uh, yeah. Just just do your own research and see if, if there's anything you can do. There are tons of comments. Uh, I'm sure some of them are helpful. So uh, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully it, nothing worse comes from this. Uh, Damn, that shit was wild, bro. Like the, the updates what fucked me up. Yeah. I knew that was going to get you. Uh, all right. With that, we're going to hit an ad break. Come back with two. Potentially three. That's Whoa. the tease. Stories. So stay tuned. Breaking news, Wikimaniacs. Our friends at Manscaped are now selling beard products just in time for Valentine's Day. That's right. The leader in men's below the waist grooming are once again revolutionizing the men's hygiene game with the new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. No one likes a weird beard, so say goodbye to all your stubble trouble and tame his mane this Valentine's. Save 20% off and free shipping by going to manscaped.com and using the code Reddit. As a man who loves Manscaped products and has a beard, this is the news that I've been waiting for. The Beard Hedger Pro Kit is the ultimate Valentine's Day gift because you will also be happy with this gift. It starts with the Beard Hedger. This electric beard hair trimmer is a premium beard sculpting machine. First off, this cordless trimmer has a rotary wheel with 20 hair cutting lengths, all with one guard. So no more messy drawers full of extra add-ons. You hear that? No more messy drawers. Plus, it's waterproof, so he can shave in the shower to avoid all that hair in the sink or on the bathroom floor. The titanium-coated T-blade is tough on hair but smooth on his face, leading to a single-stroke efficiency. The Beard Hedger Pro Kit doesn't end there, though. They have created four dermatologist-tested formulations for his post-trim hygiene. First, there's the Beard Shampoo and Conditioner. 
You need to remember man's hair is different. Beard hair is more coarse and easier to damage than other hairs on his head. That's why the kit has made shampoo and conditioner specially designed to moisturize, reduce ingrown hairs, replace natural oils, and promote beard health. Next, the kit has Manscaped's beard oil. No one wants a guy whose beard is brittle and dry. The oil relieves dryness both on his beard and skin beneath while adding a little shimmer and shine, making him look extra fine. Cap off the kit with the Beard Balm, a pomade that shapes, styles, moisturizes, and tames a sculpted look. The Beard Hedger Pro Kit also comes with three free gifts, a beard brush, comb, and scissors to ensure he has all the tools for a perfect beard. You're going to love it, and he's going to love it. So make sure to get 20% off and free shipping with the code reddit at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com when you use the code reddit. Manscaped Beard Hedger, one stroke, one guard, 20 lengths. Thanks to Manscaped for supporting the show. All right, we're back. John's laughing about something. I was going to say, wouldn't it be wild if we got sponsored by a security camera? <laughs> that was right now and we said that story. There's nothing wrong with security cameras outside no, no, your home. No, no. In, in if my it's opinion. used correctly. Yeah. At, at, like disclose when people are being recorded. Yes. Uh, yeah. I feel like security cameras would also be like, hey, don't be a creep. Disclose. Yeah. 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 Uh, Okay. So this one is listener submitted once again. Uh, John sent this to me. So I don't know if they wanted their name included. So I didn't include it. I didn't see that because I didn't read it. I just fo- I just saw, am I the asshole? I'm like, oh, forward to Josh. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm, I'm going to leave your name out, but you know who you are. Uh, you know who you are. Yeah, you know who you, you are. You know who you are. I know who you are. <laughs> All right. So am I the asshole for making my coworker quit his job? I'm going to say nice. Nah, they're a grown ass adult. They could quit if they want to quit. That's true. Damn. What if you harass them into quitting their job, Sean? And that's bad, listener. <laughs> don't don't fucking harass your coworkers. <laughs> we, we we talked about that on Monday, didn't we? We, we did. did. Yeah. We talked yeah. about it a lot, actually, <laughs> which is that was fun. A lot of office horror stories. I yeah. get excited about stories like that. So look at Maniacs. If you want us to read more office stories, please. <laughs> it warms my heart. God damn. There's a subreddit right. for that, isn't there? Probably. Probably. Yeah. I think so. We'll look it up. All right. I, 26 female, used to work for a car dealership years ago as a driver for customers. I had this one coworker in the sales department who we'll call A. A was an asshole. A for asshole. Right? That's an easy it. A right there. A was the it. kind of guy who thought he was the God's gift to women, even though he was in a three-year relationship and his girlfriend was pregnant with their first child. Ooh, I'm glad he quit. <laughs> we don't even know if he's the one that quit yet. Oh, p- poor child. I'm going to have a no income father. No dad. <laughs> True. Josh, say uh, your tagline. Oh, oh, fuck them kids. Yeah. No, fuck actually, them. I don't, I, not this kid. This is, this is what I'm fine with. <laughs> <laughs> so far. Yeah. So the situation started around a year ago after I started working there. I had all my coworkers on Snapchat because we got along great and I didn't see any issue with it until one night on the weekend at around 1 a.m. I got a snap from A. You can see where this is going. Mm, that's God a dick it. pic. I it's would, a dick pic. I would avoid Snapchat with coworkers. Probably. Yeah. yeah that's Seem like a bad Keep idea. It of everywhere course. that can be documented. <laughs> yeah. I try not to tell any of my coworkers about my private life. Yeah. Real talk. Life. I don't have, I think I only have one coworker that like has my personal Instagram and it's not like I'm like particularly private or anything, but I like make it a point to not follow anybody. Yeah. yeah. When I quit that job, then yes, we can be friends. <laughs> so Fair. Like, Holla at me. Yeah. <laughs> What's you up? guys are my coworkers, and you have everything. So, <laughs> constant oh, contact fair, yeah. with you guys. I mean, um, <laughs> Sean takes takes pictures of your shirtless pics and sell it on true. the side. So. <laughs> yeah, with without consent. <laughs> yeah, we all have our own side hustle. Now, give You've me never a said cut, no, and we can we can <laughs> talk. <laughs> Sean's <laughs> problematic, low key. <laughs> what? Yeah, am I the asshole for getting my coworker? <laughs> <laughs> all right, without so, permission from Josh. Yeah, come on. Come on. All right. So A sent snap. Uh, We can see where this is going. He started off with a normal conversation and then started to talk about how drunk he was and how he thought I was cute, etc. Damn, bro. Man, I would be fucking screenshot, screenshot, screenshot. I'm getting you, bitch. I'm getting you. I'm showing your wife or girlfriend (laughs) or whoever. Yeah, girlfriend. I ignored it and told him to stop because it made me uncomfortable and it was disrespectful to his girlfriend. The following weekend, I got there another snap from him around the same time. This time he was asking if he could send me naked photos 
or if I could send him some in return. Ain't hey, nobody hey. want to see your little weenie hug, <laughs> Junior. God damn. Bro, she already said stop at just the talking about it. Why yeah. would she want the photos of it? You know what I mean? He's a type. Why? He, like, read he, the fucking room. Read the okay. Snapchat. <laughs> that seems like the, yeah. the, the consensus of this episode is reading the fucking room. This seems like the type of guy who's going to make up an excuse and say, oh, I didn't mean to do that. That was my drunk self doing that. So I'm sorry. Yeah. That was an accident. He no, seems like a type. That's not an excuse, people out there. Yes, Just because you're not. drunk doesn't mean you're not responsible for your actions. Max. Uh, I got extremely uncomfortable and upset, and I told him to fuck off and leave me alone, or I'd tell his girlfriend what he was doing. He got Hell mad yeah. and said, I didn't know the agreement of their relationship, and I told him I didn't want to know and didn't want to be included, and blocked him after that. I love how he's like, Implying that they have an open relationship, but also she's made it very clear that she's not comfortable with this. Like that it had nothing to do with yeah, what she was actually open, saying. Your relationship being open or closed does not matter to her dis her discomfort. Yeah, you still can't harass yourself. your co harassing. Yeah, that's harassment at this point. <laughs> ah, damn. Dude, HR having a day with this, John. Yeah, John. Writing down paper and pen. <laughs> Fuck that. I'm just gonna listen and be like, go ahead, go off. I got you. I'm gonna fire your ass to begin with. So <laughs> I hoped he would leave me alone, but unfortunately, I was wrong. He'd go out of his way to stop at my desk or try to talk to me or hit on me, and every time, I would try to ignore him and walk away. It continued for a few days until I confided in another coworker, and she came with me to report it to his boss. I told his boss everything that had happened, and if they don't fire him or do something about the harassment, I'd quit, which I couldn't afford to do uh, at the time, but I had no other options. He assured me that our HR rep would be notified and something would be done about it. Yeah. Nobody ever came to talk to me, but they talked to him about what happened. I don't know what he told them, but he ended up keeping his job and continued making me feel uncomfortable. The fuck? Oh, hell no, bro. No. HR. That HR. I would have ran his ass over one of the cars they were selling. <laughs> Golly. What, what so, would you have done in that situation if someone come to you with that, John? Like, what is the, what is the procedure? What should have done? What happened? My procedure is I would have done a further investigation. Go get the other party. Maybe keep them like, you know, keep them on a separate. Because, separate. you know, you don't want retaliation going to happen. Get their account. Do a further investigation. Be like, hey, do you have any documentations? Do you have any screenshots of what happened? And if the proof is in the pudding right there, baby, that guy is fired on the spot. Because uh, it's a zero policy when it comes to sexual harassment. God damn. That's what I'm saying. I would have been. HR. Right there, quick. I'm like, sit your ass down on Friday. I oh, shit, I'll do it right here on Thursday night. Like, I got that. I don't give a fuck. I'm firing your ass on the spot. Get out. No severance. Nope. Fuck you. Mm -mm. Uh, goddamn. The HR departments need more Johns in the world. By the yes. Sounds of it. I'm saying. <laughs> I might be stupid at times in these episodes, but God, I have good He's intentions. He's good at his job, right? guys. You He's are. He's good at his you job. You are good at your job. Uh, now, here's where I might be the asshole. I loved my job, but I was extremely frustrated that I was being sexually harassed and nothing was being done about it. As you should. So I figured if he was okay with making me uncomfortable, then he should be okay if I did the same to him. Oh, I love a revenge story. I told all my closest coworkers what had happened and every single one of them was disgusted and livid, especially the mechanics, because I got along with them. After that, everyone started ignoring him unless it involved a customer. He went around asking everyone why I wasn't talking to him anymore and why everyone was being passive aggressive towards him. But I don't think anyone told him why. It took about a week or two until he finally quit and went somewhere else. It's been about three to four years and I don't feel bad about it. But am I the asshole? Nah. No, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, 100% not. You had to do what HR couldn't do. Or what Which is HR, ridiculous. I, they definitely could and they definitely should. As yeah, a matter of fact, I take know. that shit. I I escalate that shit. Be like, look at this negligence of your damn investing. Oh, it's not gonna be Ringo. Oh my god! Hello, <laughs> Ringo. Ringo. Ringo heard harassment, and she's gonna throw hands. Hi, she's little so baby. Oh, so cute. I'm so distracted. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Sorry, you were. I forget what you were talking about. Too. Oh, anyways, <laughs> I, I'm I'm gonna take it a step further. And if I were you, Op, like I'd go up to just be like, hey. There's a there's a big ass negligence on HR's part. Yeah. Even if I'm not going to get something out of this monetarily, you going you should get something for the next person that could possibly experience this. Get that HR rep, I wouldn't say fired, but reprimanded <laughs> to the point that they need to take more sensitivity training because this is not the way of doing business. Cuz now yeah. you're setting a bad example to the future people who's going to say, "Hey, I'm being sexually harassed." And that's the culture of a company that they're trying to set. It ain't gonna be good, man. That's not something. That's not something that should be continued or, or you know, like 
just ignored. Like, who the yeah. fuck does that? Yeah, that's pretty fucked up just to ignore sexual yes. harassment in the workplace. Kudos to your empl- uh, your coworkers who actually yes. fucking did something. Oh, yeah. um, sounds like half of them could easily be the HR rep and do a way better job. So bare min- The bare minimum of being an HR rep is just to listen. And they still didn't do that. Yeah, they didn't even do half their job. And then yeah, exactly. probably firing him would have been the other one. Uh, right. It, I, it is three to four years ago. So you're pro- I don't know. I doubt you're there anymore. Um, but hopefully that, what was it, a car sales? Car dealership. Yeah, or- car dealership. Hopefully that car dealership has uh, learned and grown and uh, stopped putting up with that bullshit. Mm-hmm. All right. On to our fourth story. Am I the asshole for teaching my daughter a lesson on New Year's Eve? And this was cross posted by Jennifer. They, it was screenshots. That's not actually the title, but there was no title in the screenshot. Mm. So I made my own. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go out of the limb. My prediction is going to be yes. Something about teaching lessons when they're put this way, it gives me public humiliation vibes. Mm. And okay. I do not like that. I don't mind reprimanding someone behind closed doors or like outside public view. Yeah, yeah. But if this is something more like, in front of everybody, I would think you're the asshole. Okay. Sean's bored. No, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> Again, we're recording later than usual. Uh, I will say I honestly have no clue. So just, just so one of us is right, John, I'll, I'll go not the asshole. Wow. What if everyone's okay. the asshole? Then you're trying to bat a hundred. <laughs> uh, all right. So New Year's Eve aftermath here. My daughter, 16, was allowed to go to a New Year's Eve party by herself for the first time. We clearly defined rules beforehand. Uh, one, no oh, drinking. No, she embarrassed her 16-year-old in front of everybody. Huh? Yeah. Uh, I think it's a he. Or they. But I'm not sure. Bad. Uh, I don't know if that was in the context. But anyway, sorry. Uh, so, one, no drinking. Two, only stay at the house we agreed on and be home by two. I thought my daughter should be grown up enough to handle those rules, but apparently I was mistaken. At 1.30, she called me to tell me that her friend wanted her to go to another party and that she joined them. Now said friends had vanished and she was at the house party where she felt unsafe and wanted me to pick her up. She was at quite a remote place. In no way would she be home by two. Also, she was clearly intoxicated. I believe in consequences, so I refuse to pick her up. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah, oh, I was wrong. No, no, no. I was <sighs> way wrong. I was super duper wrong. Yeah. Oh, I can no, see no, why no. they deleted their no, post. No, 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 no. Because they probably yeah. got fucking owned. Roasted. No, 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 Dude, what an no. idiot. I told her I'll, this I'll will, let you finish. I have yeah, a lot yeah, of feelings yeah. about this. I told her that this will be a learning experience and to figure out how to get home. She's old, she is too old for rules so that she doesn't uh, so she doesn't need my parenting anymore. I don't know what that word is actually supposed to mean, but <laughs> she tried to argue, but I just ended the call and went to bed. The next morning I woke up to several aggressive threatening messages from my ex-wife who apparently agreed to pick her up instead, which is against custody agreement. My daughter is staying with her and refusing to leave, also against the agreement. I don't believe there was any real danger and just had to show her the rules exist for a reason. My ex seems to think differently. Am I the asshole? How can you not think there's danger? She's in a remote place, drunk with people she doesn't know. She's 16? Yeah. That's like the definition of danger. (laughs) stupid are you? And, and the, the crazy part dad. about oh, go ahead, John. <laughs> or mom. Cra- I don't know. The, I don't know. The who. crazy part about this is you said your daughter was kind of old enough to like not acknowledge rules, or you're making it out that your daughter's irresponsible, right? Right. If anything, that's the complete opposite of what your daughter is doing. Yes. Because one, they entrusted you to say like, Hey, I'm going to a party, this and that they communicated with you and say, I'm going to be here Two, They followed up with you and say, my friends wants to go elsewhere. This is where we're going to be at. Yep. They gave you a location and three, also, bro, you don't think they're going to get drunk at a new year's Eve party. You fucking idiot. 16 year old. <laughs> I, I've woken up at places. I'm like, Oh my God, I don't even know where I am when I was 16. Okay. <laughs> Jesus and Christ. I didn't call my parents and I probably had them worried fucking sick. So yeah. Three, they asked you as a parent, be like, Hey, I'm here. I'm at a vulnerable spot. I'm mm-hmm. taking an L right now. I'm probably embarrassed as shit to call you, but yeah, please, I'm- I feel like I'm not safe. Pick me up. Yeah, you I'll don't... take the I'll take the like the repercussions after like right. just get me out of this position. And exactly, get your child and in a safe place, and then yeah. teach them. Reprimand Why would them you... to your own will afterwards? Yes. Well, not your own will. You don't. You... Oh, 
Yeah, yeah the, you know. That could, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That like could a, be weird, but... Yeah, yeah. At your own um, discretion, how about that? <laughs> the the only learning, like, things that she's learning in this situation is that she can never trust you again when she needs exactly. you. Exactly. And so yes. all that is going to do is push her away, and then when she gets to another party and she, you know, ends up feeling like she needs to, you know, take a drunk drive home or or something like that, you know what I mean? Where they she feels like she has no other choice. And and you're putting her in that situation going forward, which is completely insane as a parent to to try and do that. You broke her trust. Like point blank period, you you broke her trust. Yeah. Cuz she trusted you to be there for. Her. I mean, granted <laughs> At that stage of your life, you were probably the same damn way, you know, yeah. like you, you probably went around partying it up. And I'm not saying like most kids do this or most teenagers do this, but no. come on, what do you expect from a, a, a 16 year old partying? That's yeah. <laughs> so, social status is everything for a lot of kids that age, you know, and not many kids would even remotely think of asking their parents for assistance because that's so embarrassing yeah. to do. When I was younger, and I never drank, so it was never an issue for me. I was going to say, I was a lame-ass 16-year-old. I wasn't doing it. <laughs> Man, I, was, but, well, I was doing all the shit, bro. Like, when you were 12 oh or some shit. <laughs> my parents gave me a couple 13. rules. They were like, never drive drunk, never get in a drunk vehicle. If you need a ride, you can call us at any time, and we will come pick you up. And that was always the rule. Again, I never had to use it, but that should be the rule, right? You should always make sure that your child arrives home safe, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're making them come home at 2 a.m. Like, you should have some sort of responsibility in getting them home uh, at that age. So, yeah, you're 100% the asshole. Damn, I was so responsible back then. God damn. <laughs> you're a wild, I you're see, a wild teenager, bro. I was, bro. Yeah. Teenager, bro. <laughs> I was I wanna, my parents' headache. I want an episode where John just tells us stories about his, his youth, because it sounds... Like the hangover movies. <laughs> Drugs, alcohol, you name it. Whatever God the fuck. Damn. Good. Yeah, like, everything in the book, baby. Crazy man. And look at you now. I'm domesticated as fuck now, bro. All I care <laughs> about is my 401k and my credit, baby. <laughs> All right. So I think we have enough time for this last one if you guys are into it. Hell yeah. Let's do it. All right. Gotta give it to the Wikimaniacs, man. So this one comes from Odd Midscore Source, Midscore 853 actually hyphen but you, you know the vibes oh, you know you know would i be the asshole if i used my paternity leave to visit my family uh, i mean if he if he had a is the child and baby mama coming as well i don't know we don't even know if it's male or female well it's <laughs> it's paternity it's leave paternity so. leave oh sorry so yes, I assume, yeah yeah, yeah not paternity. Assume, my bad no you're good uh if if you're taking the rest of the family to go hang out with your family seems okay, okay. if you're Using your PTO uh, when you should be helping the mother of your child, and you decide, mm -hmm. oh, fuck it, I'll just go visit my family. I'm going I to Disneyland, I'm, guys. Yeah. <laughs> They're back and going to a lake house. That sounds yeah. dope. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. You stay with the baby. <laughs> yeah, I think you're a dick. I, I'm, I'm going the same way with Sean. All right. All right. Paternity leave should be used for <laughs> taking care of that father. baby. <laughs> yeah. Being paternal, yeah. Yeah, being paternal. <laughs> All right. Well, let's hop into it and see if you guys are correct. My wife and I have been arguing about this for weeks, and she suggested that I post here. I love that. Yeah, he fucked up already. He's the asshole. <laughs> yeah. We already my know wife, the answer to this. My wife is 16 weeks pregnant with our first child. We have been discussing how to use our family leave. Each one of us gets eight weeks of family leave to be used within the first year of the baby's life. My wife is planning on taking her whole eight weeks right when the baby is born. Well, no shit. That, well, Yeah. <laughs> She thinks that I should take two weeks when the baby is born and six weeks when she goes back to work so that we don't need to put the kid in childcare until he's 14 weeks old. The issue is that I want to use two weeks of my paternity leave to visit my family who lives at a state so I don't have to use vacation days. No. I gave her nope, you're two, an asshole. <laughs> no. I gave her two you're options, though. He gave her two options. I can spend six weeks with the baby when she goes back to work, but I won't take the first two weeks off. And that was option one. Option two... I can take two weeks off when the baby is born and then four weeks off when she goes back to work. This is my preference. No. My wife said... <laughs> Those are both bad choices. Because either choices. way, that's two weeks without your newborn child. Yeah, exactly. Not uh, good. No matter, <laughs> Both your choices are bad. Unless you take that child to see your family out of state. Well, because uh, she has to be with the baby the first. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? So she doesn't get well, a choice. Well, then no. Use your fucking PTO, <laughs> man. I don't know what the circumstances are or if the family can visit instead, but why can't the family come over instead? Facts. 
yeah. I mean, that would be a smarter decision for sure. Maybe, I mean, again, we I don't know the circumstance. Maybe they're yeah. unable to travel, but Fair. that seems like a better solution to me. When or my sister wait. lived out of state, uh, when she lived in California and had her first baby, and all her babies out of state, my mom or my sister would always fly and like spend like a week or two there just to help recoup and cook and do stuff right. around the house. Like, and then get to meet your new grandchild and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So makes sense. Yeah. Why, why is that not one of your options? Uh, <laughs> he only has two. Okay, Sean, that's as high and they're as they're both count. bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So my wife says this is unacceptable and that I'm prioritizing my family over her and the baby. I Next. disagree. I don't think it makes much of a difference if the baby starts daycare at 12 or 14 weeks. I only get to see my family once or twice a year since they moved out of state. And I think this is a good opportunity to do so without it impacting our vacation time. I think her dislike of my family is affecting her logic and that if they no. got along better, she would be fine with this arrangement. No. no. Plus, lots of men don't take paternity leave and their family manages. I'm still dedicating six weeks to the baby, so we have plenty of bonding time. Am I the asshole or is she being unreasonable? You're a fucking asshole. <laughs> Bro, it's your fucking child. It's yeah. your kid. So, like, point blank period. Me- there's no... There's no, you're giving me the vibes of like, uh, oh, I'm, I'm here to babysit the kid. Yes. It's your exactly. own goddamn kid. Take care of your kid, man. <laughs> your family should do something different. Your family should accommodate you because your life is different now that there's life that's needing your help. Yeah. Once you have a baby that becomes your, you Number know, your one. life for, for yes. quite a while. Uh, so if you, yeah, and you've planned for this, as, uh, presumably. And so. You had to see that. Bro, this use was your coming. fucking PTO. <laughs> yeah. Use your PTO. Like you if you have it available, use it. Exactly. You're not gonna go on a vacation for a while anyway. <laughs> exactly. So use it in a few months when everything is calmed down and you know, you have more of a schedule and your wife is not recovering from giving a baby like having a baby. <laughs> so insane. Is there anything else you guys want to hit on? I know we hit on a lot in the middle of the story. So. Yeah, this guy sucks. Uh, it's wild the lengths he's willing to go to not take care of this child. Did y'all hear? This is like giving me big vibes of that one celebrity comedian who immediately after his wife gave birth, he like announced a world tour after like two oh. months or something like that. I was like, God damn, you really don't want to fucking be with your family. <laughs> I think it, I think it was John Mulaney or something like that. Oh, he's kind of shitty know. anyway. Yeah, I heard he's From not great. Yeah. yeah. But he like, I I don't know if they're married. Olivia Munn is his his yeah baby's mother. To be fair, but like oh. literally oh, like two or three months afterwards, he was like, "I'm going on tour next <laughs> month, world not, tour." Not to be fair, but like they have the means that they could pay for sure. childcare. Uh, so it doesn't. Matter. You could do I, a world tour, I mean, whatever, it's, man. It's still shitty, but you know. It's it's completely different. I mean, They're in a but, different world than us. So, but it's, it's it's the same thing. He has the means to take PTO to yeah, go well, visit true. his family another time. It's yeah. he's trying to be convenient, or he's just trying to get away early. I don't know. Yeah. But this guy sucks. Yeah, do your world tour before the baby comes. You know. Yeah, or wait until <laughs> you know. Yeah, I don't there know. Are place more where... than two or three months. That's wild. <laughs> I feel you'd have better like comedy bits after the baby's born. You know what I mean? Yeah. After you've like lived with it for a while, there's, there's some, or, or just do like a local tour. If you really need to fucking get it out of your system, you got some yeah. jokes you got to tell. Don't go on a world fucking tour after your first <laughs> child. That's wild. <laughs> I could not believe that when I saw that shit. That's crazy, but does not surprise me with him. So, uh, wow. Off topic, but not off topic kind of. So, uh, with that, we'll close off the episode. I hope you enjoyed that bonus story we did. And if you want two extra bonus stories, go to patreon.com slash cultivate podcast network and sign up today. The link is also in the description. Uh, we had someone mention that the Patreon was hard to find because it's not actually read it on wiki, but uh, cultivate is our podcast network, network. podcast network. So uh, that's why it's underneath that. If so uh, were these people assholes, Wikimaniacs, let us know in the comments down below on YouTube. If you're on the live TikTok, what's up? We love you. Thanks for joining us. If you want to hear more, please consider subscribing to the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts and give us a rating and review on whatever platform you're on. Five stars. And share the podcast with a friend. Friends. Don't forget, you can submit your own Am I the Asshole stories on our subreddit or with the Google form in the show notes, which are- You guys have been doing that shit. Great job. Tons. So a lot of stories I had to choose from today and uh, next week I will- Choose even more from you guys, which is awesome. Uh, So keep sending them. Yeah.
Yes. Uh, thank you, Sean and John, for coming on today and giving Yo, your thank take. Thank you, Josh, for finding wow. stories. <laughs> yes. Thank you, you man. <laughs> we appreciate you. Thanks, Sean. I appreciate that, dude. Why, um, yeah, of course, man. And thank you all the Wikimaniacs for another amazing episode. We will Bye. see you on Monday for Monday. an amazing episode from Sean, I think. Wow. I don't know. No. No? Yes. I think it's from John. I think it's John. I think no, it's wait. John. It's yours. Wait. Yeah. No. no, it's yours. We just did Sean last week. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that's right. <laughs> we can't keep track of time. No, we can't. Also, kudos to Josh and I for just completely not acknowledging what's happening with one third it's of this okay. podcast currently. Yeah. Uh, we're just going to power chaos. through, act like it's normal. And it's normal. Very last like time you did this, I muted him. So I don't know if I'll do that again. <laughs> don't do it. Let All right. We'll see it. you on Monday, Wikimaniacs. Love you. Later. Your boy Sean. <laughs> <laughs>